Welcome to another episode of the Podcast for Education exclusively brought to you by Africa Business Radio. Today, taking us on the subject science is Miss Irene, and she'll be treating the topic Adaptation of Organisms to Their Habitats. Hello, learners. Welcome to another fun time of learning. My name is Miss Irene. We are learning about adaptation of organism to their habitat in science for JSS2, for JSS2, that junior secondary school 2, year 2, uh, or year 8, as they call them. All right. We are learning about adaptation of organism to their habitat. We are learning about adaptation of organism to their habitat. Before now, uh, we ha- first have to try to establish what an habitat is or what even adaptation is. We are going to be learning about what adaptation is and how it relates or how different animals adapt to their different environments, how different uh, animals adapt to their environment. First, what is adaptation? Adaptation means special features that help an organism to live and survive in a particular habitat. Every living thing on earth belongs to one habitat or the other because it is always interacting with some biotic and abiotic components. Now, when we talk about biotic and abiotic components, biotic components of an habitat or of an environment refers to the living things that are within that environment. While we have abiotic components refers to Things such as energy, water, hair, food, carbon dioxide. These are the non-living components of the environment. And all these in a suitable living condition. Now, for example, there are certain species of plant and animal that can survive only in a rainforest habitat. And some are only suited in a desert habitat. So we'll be learning about all the different characteristics of this animal. Okay, we'll be learning about the different characteristics of this animal. And something also important is we have that we um, majorly or simply put um, in adaptation is when a species become fitted to its environment. And when it does this, it results in natural selection. And sometimes this is acted on by heritable variation as it's transferred to different generation. So we are going to be looking at some adaptation of animals that are on land and adaptation of animals that are in uh, water for adaptation of different animals that are on land, looking at the environment, looking at their um, interaction, the way they've been able to evolve so that they can adapt, so that they can um, exist and thrive in the environment where they find themselves. Now, many animals are specialists and require special habitats, components to survive. One of such adaptation is what is called camouflage. Okay, one of such adaptation is what is called camouflage, and we have um, an example of some animal that have been able to use this adaptation to a very good extent is what is called the Wagla Pit Viper. The Wagla Pit Viper. And another one of such adaptation is um, the stick insect. We have the stick insect. These animals, they've been able to evolve um, this adaptation of camouflage to be able to protect themselves from predators or from even prey, from predators and then to be able to get prey very well. Now, for plants in the tropical rainforest, because in the tropical rainforest we have trees existing in canopies, so the sunlight being able to reach a lot of ground plants or plants that are found on the ground floor of the forest, um, sunlight being able to reach them is a limitation. So, a lot of them grows in layer, okay? Where you have canopies um, receiving more light and then you have plants that don't need so much sunlight like ferns you know like ferns are found on the ground floor and another adaptation of plants found in rainforests is that some of them have developed very shallow roots okay they've developed shallow wide root because most of the soil in the rainforest are thin are poor in nutrient then little sun reach the floor so some of them um, have developed root system that's arises from the ground so that they can absorb 
nutrient all around. Still talking about adaptation in the tropical rainforest. So, and also due to the evolution that are occurring and activities of human that have caused a lot of people to start removing the trees found in the tropical rainforest. A lot of the animals there have had to adapt themselves to being able to evolve into using different habitats because most of their home tree have been destroyed for logging and ranching reasons. Now, still moving on in the deciduous rainforest, we have a lot of abiotic factor affecting animals there. And because even in the deciduous temperate deciduous forest we have the occurrence of the fall season which is winter a lot of plants have learned how to adapt to the different varying season now a lot of plants a lot of trees found in the temperate deciduous forest are very very adapted they are very very adapted and what we have is that a lot of them grow in layers they grow in layers and they've adapted in such a way that they can exist in the different climate, in the different weather conditions. Some of them, they shed their leaves um, during winter and then during spring, they bud again and then the leaves begin to grow and they continue their cycle of life. For animals, you know, for animals, you have um, the animals, they lose um, a lot of the animals develop winter coats. Some, some of them, you find them that during winter, they have a different covering, a different coat. And then during summer, they have a different coat. An example would be the polar bear, where sometimes during summer, it has a brown coat. And during winter, it has a white coat. And this evolution, they eat from the different layer. Example, we have the bald eagle, the weasel, and the fat dormouse. And so some animals that are found in this forest, hibernation is a way that they have um, evolved to exist in this habitat. Hibernation is a way that they have adapted, especially during the long winter month. And for some of them, they have they migrate. They adapt to migrating, that moving to areas where conditions are more suitable. They move to areas where conditions are more suitable. As we continue, we also have different adaptation of plants to the Tiger habitat. And what we have there is that you have coniferous needle-bearing trees are very abundant in this habitat. Needle-bearing trees are very adapted. One characteristic of the tegia is that the grounds are always frozen. The f- grounds are always frozen. So it makes the supply of water very limited. And due to this, the roots of plants um, grow very, very long. They, they develop very long tap roots to anchor the plants, okay? They develop deep tap roots. And also because they, um, the environment is very, very humid due to the frozen nature of the surrounding environment. So the plants develop, um, they have long needle-like leaves that are thin and waxy, which prevents it from losing a lot of water due Due to transpiration. Then we have low sunlight and poor soil. Okay. The low sunlight keep plant from growing. You when you go to the tiger, you don't have any little or no forest, um, no uh, ground plants in this environment. And also in the tiger, you also have that the animals they adapt for cold winter, they burrow, they hibernate, or they develop warm coat for insulation. So all these are different adaptation by the different animals that are found in the tajia. Now, in the savanna tropical grassland, in the tropical grassland, one of the challenges that they have or a feature of the environment is it has rainy and dry season and then because there are no tree covering, actually during the dry period, the environment is highly susceptible to forest fire, okay? It's highly susceptible to forest fire and because of this you have that the plants in the savanna or in this grassland they grow in tuft. One, it doesn't have a lot of cover Covering and it has limited rainfall, so plants don't grow there in large abundance. And also, the plants there are resistant 
they have developed resistance to drought because they have long period of dry season. They have long period where the rain does not fall at all. Then many plants have thorns and sharp leaves to protect them against predation. Now, you know, this environment, the savanna, even though it has a high um, concentration of large variety of animals, so the plants, in order to protect themselves from the animal that will feed on them, they have developed thorns, okay, to protect against predation even from animals. And then for animal, the animals migrate because of the short period of raining season. They migrate to where food is available. And most of them, you find them existing around watering holes. And one very, very fascinating adaptation is most animals tend to reproduce during the raining season. Nature have helped them in such a way that reproduction happens during um, raining season where food is abundant. So this ensures that the young ones are able to survive, okay? The young ones are able to survive. That means their reproductive cycle have evolved in such a way that they only give birth during the raining season so that the young ones have better chances of surviving. Now, we also have that because of the low elevation in savannas, they are really, really susceptible to rise in water level. They are susceptible to flooding, okay? Animals in this environment are susceptible to flooding. That's why you have trees grow very high and a lot of them try to escape on the trees to prevent being flooded, okay? To prevent being flooded. Also, you have the habitat that is known as the step now the step is a step from the desert where you have plants growing in clumps or in tufts or you have they grow in such um, gathering so that they prevent the loss of water they preserve themselves from loss of water then you have that the animal, they survive by burrowing, okay? You have an example of such is the Mongolian gerbil, okay? They survive by burrowing. And what we also have is that they migrate, okay? Animals, even in this environment, they migrate during extreme weather condition. And also some of them hibernate during extreme weather condition condition. Now moving on to plant found in the Parare, that is the Northern Hemisphere, okay, found in the Northern Hemisphere, you have the Parare. Most of the plants there are very light, so, and they form almost like foam so that they won't dry out and are easily not blown away by the wind. And then you have animals there, they've developed different adaptation to survive. A lot of them tend to burrow into the ground. A lot of them tend to burrow into the ground. Now, also in the desert, you have temperatures are very high. Okay, temperatures are very high in the desert and it has very limited amount of rainfall. It has very limited amount of rainfall. And because of this, desert plants have different adaptation. One of such is that they have spines. Most of them are succulents. Succulents mean that a lot of them, they store water within them. Okay, most of the plants that are found in the desert, they uh, store water like the cacti. Okay, like the cacti, they store water in them. Then they have thick waxy corticles okay the plant have thick waxy corticles the plant have shallow and broad root and this helps them to easily absorb every needed water an example of such plant that are found in the desert we have the joshua tree and then we have the octotolio these are different plants that are found in the desert Now, for desert animal, one major challenge for them is getting water, okay, getting water. So the way they've been able to adapt for this is that they get most of their water from food, okay? They get most of their water from food. And one way they've been able to conquer the harsh condition of their environment because extreme heat is a big problem. They have very reinforced shield-like covering. For some of them, they have shield-like covering like we have in the Amadil lizard okay like we have in the amadillo lizard they are able to protect the soft tissue of their body with an hard covering so they are able to 
keep preserve themselves. And another one is that some of the animals, like the coyote, they have very large ears. They have very large ears. And you find out that most cats, this is an adaptation to help maintain its internal body temperature. Okay? Most cats that have large ears, what you find out is that that's how they lose it. That's how they lose their body heat and they are able to keep their body warm to a low level. And also, some of them have very small animals that are found in the desert. They don't tend to grow big so that they can conserve their body energy. A lot of them are very, very small in size, okay, compared to animals that we will find in the tropical rainforest or in the grassland, like the big five that we have, the lions, the elephants, you know, the zebras, the buffaloes, you know, the animals that are found in the desert are very, very small because relative to the space, to the food that they have available, they are able to maintain their body size because they are not so large. So these are different adaptations found in the desert. Then another habitat that we are looking at is the tundra. Okay, something about the tundra is that the tundra is a very open space. Okay, the temperatures are rarely higher than 10 degrees. So it's a cold area. It has a permafrost layer and it has very short growing season. And because of this, the plants grow very, very, very close to the ground and they have very shallow uh, roots. Some trees can grow as just have a height of one meter. They grow to a height to a height of one meter. So these are adaptation that the plant in the tundra have evolved. You know, you have perennials, you have woody shrubs. These are all examples of tundra animal. And then you have um, for the animals, you know, a lot of them are visitors, you know, because they have short breeding or short planting season. So a lot of them are migrants. They migrate from places where they can get food and probably spend some time to breed around here. And also you have very few predators in this environment. You have very few predators because there's really no uh, resources or the animals there. The environment is not conducive for them. So there's little competition. And that's why we have examples of animals found in this habitat are the grizzly bear, the arctic fox and the snowy howl. These are the animals that are found in this environment. Now, these are the adaptation of animals found on land. So we'll be looking at adaptation of animals found in water. Okay, and the different water habitats determine the adaptation of the animals. For ponds and lakes, which are slowly moving water, they are freshwater system, and sometimes some of them are fed by aquifers or stream. So some of the animals that are found there, you know, because the water to a large extent is still, so the sun have opportunity to um, reach the bottom of the pond so and most time ponds are fed by rainfall and this are, is sometimes seasonal so most ponds you have algae and plant all through the year because of the presence of sunlight and because of the presence of water which is always provided so you have in the different region of the pond you have different animals there that have adapted to the different riches of sunlight you know plants are floating most of the plants there they are floating plants okay Okay. They have very fibrous, um, light roots and it helps them. Also, some of them, the leaves have evolved into uh, floaters or um, what are called cups that help them float easily on the water. And the animals that are found around lakes is that what we have is that the animal live in, most of the animals there are amphibians. Most of the animal, most amphibians can be found around ponds and lakes because a lot of them, sometimes the, for the amphibians, they breed in the water and they live on the land. They're able to um, exist or thrive in the amphibious life because of the existence. We have quite a number of animals that are found around lakes and all. Then for the lakes, around the lakes, you also have marsh area. And something about the marsh area is that the water is brackish. That means it has a high level of saltiness. Okay, the water is brackish in marsh. And sometimes you have some freshwater region close to it. You have some freshwater regions close to it. And then you have the swamps, you have the bogs, um, which are 
poorly drained um, regions, which are poorly drained regions. And most of the time in the swamp, because of the varying degree of saltiness of the water, you have um, animals that are, are able to easily move on land, especially when the tide are high. And then for the plants there, most of the plants are adapted to survive muddy soils. Okay. One thing you have to understand is that the pH of muddy soil is a bit alkaline. Okay. The pH of muddy soil is a bit alkaline and because of this alkaline nature of the water only plants that have adapted to this ph level are able to survive there and plants that are found here also have developed what are called breathing roots okay they have what are called breathing roots and this breathing root allows the plants to be able to get oxygen from the surface of the soil it allows the plant to get uh, from the surface of the soil. Then we have the rivers, okay? We have plants and animals that survive in rivers. Now, river is, compared to the pond or the lake, is the water moves at a much slower pace, okay? This is a continually moving water. So animals that can are found here have to develop, they have to move uh, with the tide. They have to be able to move against the current or the movement of the water. So a lot of them are very strong swimmers, okay? A lot of the animals that are found in rivers are very strong swimmers. And because of the movement of water, the penetration of light from sunlight vary in amount. So we don't have a lot of floating animal found in rivers, but you have algae, you have sea seaweed growing on the river bed in the water then we have estuaries okay we have estuaries estuaries are deposits of rivers from the land okay they are deposits of rivers from the land and most of the time even in the estuaries you have the reefs okay you have the coral reefs these are specially adapted plant life that are found in coral reefs and most coral reefs are found near the equator because corals are able to survive in water that have a consistent water temperature and then the rivers contain shallow water and also reefs are able to survive in waters with very low nutrient most rivers most estuaries because of the eye decay that occurs in them they are very very rich in nutrients but these are not very very helpful for plant and then we have animals that have adapted to this we have the clownfish that have different colors and have developed ways to survive in the coral lake then we have the large body of water which is the ocean which is the ocean the ocean has the largest variation of species of animal it has the largest variation of species of animal because it's a large body of water is a very large body of water and here we have plants are microscopic and macroscopic and you have a lot of floating plants okay um, example is the kelp you know these are different plants that have evolved you have a lot of microscopic plants that are a lot of algae you have a lot of microbes that have evolved in the ocean they can be found on the ocean floor all these plants can be found on the ocean floor then we also have animals like i mentioned that in the ocean you have a wide variety of animal from the zooplankton to the largest uh, mammal that is found in the world okay from the tiny tiny zooplankton to the shrimp to the largest mammal which is the unback whale they are all found in the ocean they are all found in the ocean and most of the time the planktons are used for food the animals have developed different adaptation a lot of them have very very fascinating adaptation to protect themselves against predator and also to help them catch their prey so many of these adaptations are too numerous for us to mention these are adaptation of animals in water so we've been learning today about adaptation of organism to the environment it's quite a lengthy lengthy one because 
animals, even though we are one, we as humans also have developed our own adaptation to the environment that we find ourselves. You know, when it is cold, we put on our jacket. When it is warm, we wear our t-shirt. All these are ways that we have adapted to our environment. I hope you've had fun learning today, um, even as we learn about animals and their adaptation to different habitats that they find themselves. Until we meet again for another exciting experience of learning, do have a wonderful time. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Podcast for Education exclusively brought to you by Africa Business Radio. Remember, for feedbacks and questions, you could hit us up across any of our social media handles that is on Facebook or Instagram at Africa Business Radio. Twitter at Africa Biz Radio. Listen again to this particular episode or any other episode of the Podcast for Education on the podcast channel. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com to do so. I am Onoja saying, do not stop learning. Bye for now. <laughs>